Hey, everybody, and welcome back. This is episode two, part three of Revealing God. This episode, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what Jesus means to me and how I kind of think of, of Jesus. So anyways, um, what I'd like to do is start with a scripture course, right? And basically this scripture is when it's uh, Matthew 14, 25 through 31, and the disciples were out on the boat and Jesus wasn't with them. Basically a storm had come in and they got scared. And uh, it says about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified in their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? So there, the, the most important thing that I get from that is one thing that we have a problem with, I, I would say every single day, um, with as busy as our world is, and as distracted as we get with the internet, with our phones, with TV, um, with kids, with whatever, right? Dogs, whatever. Um, you know, Jesus calls us to focus on him. And as long as, as Peter was focused on Jesus, he was completely fine walking on water. Miracles are only possible when your focus is on Jesus. The second that he took his eyes off of Jesus. Then he started to sink and Jesus had to reach out and save him. And so to me, what that is an example of is uh, an example of the way we should be living our lives. Now, a lot of times it's definitely easier said than done, right? Because there's, like I said, so many distractions in the world, but it's important to take the time every day to spend time with God, to read his word, to pray, worship, however, however you feel the closest to God. Um, I do it on my walks with my dog. Um, I feel closest to God when I'm hunting or fishing. Um, you know, and I tend to do most of my conversations then. Um, and so the important thing is to Keep your eye on Jesus and that's when miracles can happen. That's when Jesus can do the most work in your life. Now, Jesus to me, he's, you know, we, we talked um, in one of the previous episodes about the Trinity and, you know, God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy spirit. And God, the father is there to guide us, to support us, to be there for us, just like a parent would be right. And he's there to discipline us. Sometimes he's there to correct us just like we would a dog that barks when he's not supposed to or whatever. And so Jesus to me is the friend. He is the best friend. He's the companion. He is um, not only that, but he's also my savior. He is the one who was willing to lay his life on the line for mine, right? And so for any of you veterans out there, you know that there's situations where, you know, as a fellow soldier, you might have to put your life on the line for another soldier. And, um, you know, and some of you may have even done that. And, you know, it's, it's, that's, that is a true love when you're willing to sacrifice yourself for someone else. Well, Jesus not only sacrificed his life to save our mortal lives, but he sacrificed everything 
to save our immortal souls. Okay. And so that is how much more he loves us. And it's, it's hard to grasp, um, especially in the human realm, right? Because it's really hard to fathom a love like that. Um, you know, you may love your wife, you may love your husband, your kid, um, and you would do anything for them. I know that I would lay my life down for my wife and daughter. Um, but to imagine a love that's as deep as Christ's, I can't say that it probably even comes close to his. And honestly, I would venture to say, if I'm being a hundred percent honest, I don't even know how to love even close to the way that Christ loves because his love is so deep. And I don't even understand fully what that love means. And, um, I just know that I feel it and, um, it just, you know, I, I don't know how to go about showing that kind of love. Right. So Christ, he loves us all, even when we're sinners, even when we're doing the wrong thing, even when we cut someone off. If you've ever been on the road with me, if you've ever ridden in a car with me, you know darn well that if someone cuts me off, I'm not loving on that person, right? So I, I can't say that I have anywhere near the kind of love that Jesus has. And it's something that I aspire for, right? Um, I'll never get there, but it's like shooting for the stars. And if I get to the moon, then, you know, then at least I made it to the moon type deal. Right. Um, but, and then the Holy spirit's kind of your, your spiritual guide. It's that gut feeling you get. Um, he's, he's that, um, guiding force, that inspiration, that, that, chills that you feel when you're hearing a good sermon or a good song or, or a good story. Um, that's the Holy spirit it, it, and he comes upon you and, and, um, you can feel him physically uh, a lot of the times. And so, um, but that's, that's Jesus to me. Right. And, and I think if we're all honest with ourselves and with each other, you know, we, we all have a lot to, learn from Jesus and, uh, from the story of Peter trying to walk on water to Jesus is that, you know, anything's possible in this world with Jesus, anything is possible. The problem is we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. And if we're being honest and if we're being a hundred percent real with ourselves, we're not doing that. And that's me included, right? There's, I mean, I can't imagine trying to live every single day doing nothing but prayer or, you know, um, just 100% thoughts on Jesus all the time. Right. But you can live your life in a way that reflects his love, reflects his light. Um, you can take moments throughout your day. It doesn't even have to be, um, a long conversation with Jesus. Uh, you can say, Hey, Jesus just want to let you know, I love you. And that's, he's going to appreciate that little bit of a reach out from you to him to let him know, um, that, uh, you're thinking about him. So anyways, um, I think that's probably all I have. This one's going to be a little bit shorter, but I've been trying to keep them, you know, a little bit more, uh, compartmentalized for you guys, just so that you're easier able to consume them. Um, you know, I know you guys have busy lives and whatnot, and, but I really feel like God wants me to put these messages out there. And as an obedient Christian, I'm going to do it, whether, whether I like being on camera, whether I feel comfortable doing this or not, or whether I think it's going to go anywhere because, um, you know, I, it's not like I have thousands upon thousands of friends and it's not like, a lot of the friends on Facebook are really engaged and share the posts or, or anything like that. So, you know, it's just, it's one of those things where if God wants you to do it, it doesn't matter. You do it. Right. And so that's what I'm doing. And, you know, I pray that you guys uh, follow my lead. If you're feeling God pulling on your heart to do something, 
you know, make sure it's God, make sure it's not like your human flesh or whatever that uh, makes you want to do it. But uh, just like my book, uh, I really, I really wanted to help other veterans um, who have gone through the struggles that I went through with the uh, anthrax vaccine and whatnot. But I knew it was going to be a very, very difficult road writing the book. And I knew it was going to take forever because I couldn't sit down for very long and write. Um, but I also knew it was something that I thought that God wanted me to do. And so I had to do it. And, you know, I just encourage everyone that if you feel like God is pulling you one way or another, you know, pray on it, make sure it's him and then go do it. Don't wait, just do it. Okay. Anyways, let's, let's end in prayer here. God, we thank you for this day, God. And, uh, I pray for all my viewers here, God, that you give them the, um, knowledge of what they are to do for your kingdom, to advance your kingdom in their life, God. I pray that they're able to hear that. And I pray that they are able to follow through with doing what you want them to do, Lord. Lord, we pray for our country. It is an absolute mess right now. We pray for the world. It is just like our country. It's an absolute mess, God. And we know that really the only way that things are going to ever straighten out is through Jesus and his, it, his coming back is the only thing that is going to straighten this world out because we are so far gone. People themselves can't pull us back, right? The government's so corrupt. Even the churches have become corrupt. Um, you, you see it on the news where, you know, churches are not necessarily following doctrine or I'm not going to get into specifics, but you know what's going on and you know that it's true, Lord. So I pray that uh, you just hurry and send your son Jesus to come back and save us from all of this evil and corruption in this world, Lord. And once again, I pray for all of our friends out there who are going through difficult times. Um, I know I have two dear friends right now that have heart issues. I'd like to uh, pray for healing for them, Lord. And uh, any other request that anybody is having right now, Lord, I pray that you answer those in your name, Jesus. Amen. So guys, one thing that, that you, you need to know is in prayer, I know I mentioned it uh, on one of the other podcasts, but... Um, God doesn't see things as past, future, and present. He sees everything like, I believe, linear. Um, he sees everything happening at once. In my mind is how I picture it. Uh, he knows what's going to happen. He knows what already has happened, and he sees it now. So if you're watching this video and it's past because I don't do live videos, and I probably never will because I have dogs, and it's probably not going to happen because they like to bark. Um, but, uh, just know that you can pray right along with me and God hears those. And with our, with our combined, um, agreement in prayer, those answer, those prayers will be answered. And so, you know, uh, the Bible says where two or more among you are gathered, there I am. Um, it's, it's in the word, it's his promise. And so just wanted to leave you with that. So don't be afraid to close your eyes and pray right along with me. All right. Love you guys. Take care.